Deep in the Pranhita, Godavari Basin of south-central India, the Upper Malari Formation captures a late Triassic world on the brink of the Dinosaur Age. First noted near the village of Malari in 1864 and distinguished as a formation in 1881, its beds gained early fame when Richard Lidecker named the Phytosaur Parasuchus hislopi in 1885. Today it's pivotal because it preserves some of the earliest dinosaur-dominated ecosystems, yielding basal sauropodomorphs and, most recently, the Herorosaurian Malariraptor. These animals thrived on broad, river-fed floodplains laid down in a semi-arid, strongly seasonal climate, with shifting channels, ephemeral ponds, and thin carbonate beds that mark pulses of wetter times. Alongside the early dinosaurs lived long-snouted phytosaurs and giant amphibians, painting an immersive, monsoon-touched ecosystem at the close of the Triassic. Cranosaura is a dome-headed archosauromorph, the sister to Trioptychus, together defining the clade Protopycnosia, a peculiar lineage that echoes, rather than belongs to, the later Pachycephalosaur boneheads. Its skull roof swells into a forward-leaning dome pierced by a deep dorsal pit, possibly tied to the pineal complex, and built from complex, trabecular bone, a striking case of convergence with dome-headed dinosaurs. The genus rests on two around 9 cm cranial domes collected by Cuddy in the 90s and formally described in 2021, leaving the rest of the skeleton and overall body size unresolved. With only the cranium in hand, its ecology remains cautious inference, rather than a proven battering ram, the reinforced, ornamented dome most plausibly served display, recognition, or protection in a terrestrial community, an elegant solution repeated across deep time. Maleraptor sits near the base of Sauriscia as an early diverging Herorosaurian, consistently recovered outside Herorosauridae in recent phylogenetic analyses. Its holotype shows a fully open acetabulum, a short postacetabular blade lacking a brevis fossa, and a ventrally directed pubis, a distinctive character blend that anchors its identity. From that architecture, and by comparison with close Herorosaurs, it reads as a lightly built, long-tailed biped optimized for quick, hindlimb-powered strides, though the missing skull and forelimbs keep any finer predatory toolkit necessarily cautious. Ecologically, think of a nimble faunivore threading the floodplain food web alongside early sauropodomorphs such as Jacopalosaurus, with semi-aquatic phytosaurs and large temnus bundles working the channels and ponds nearby. Jacopalosaurus is an early sauropodomorph placed within Anisauridae at the base of Platyosauria, linking India's basal plant eaters with Brazilian forms like Anisaurus. Its holotype is a hindlimb heavy kit and the specific name is correctly asymmetricus under Article 34. Those proportions sketch a lightly built, long-tailed biped with a modest neck and sure-footed stride, an agile browser rather than a bruiser, typical of early Platyosaurians. It likely fed low on the floodplain alongside the Guaibasaurid Nambalia while nimble herosaurs coursed the same channels, part of a community numerically dominated by sauropodomorphs. Nambalia is a non-platyosaurian basal sauropodomorph, just outside Platyosauria, marking an early branch in the rise of long-necked plant eaters. It's known from a tightly associated suite of postcranial bones, showing the dinosaurian open hip and a prominent ascending process on the ankle. Scaled from those parts and by comparison with close early sauropodomorphs, it reads as a slender-limbed, long-tailed biped with capable forehands for gathering low vegetation, built for steady, economical strides rather than explosive speed. Within a river-braided fauna numerically dominated by sauropodomorphs, Nambalia likely browsed the alluvial flats while swift herosaurs and lurking phytosaurs patrolled the channels nearby.
Welcome to the Kota Formation, an extraordinary slice of Jurassic India thrust into the spotlight by the 70s digs in the Pranhatap, Godavari Basin, where fossils like Baraposaurus first emerged from mudstones and limestone. Today, Kota is prized as one of the clearest windows into early Gondwanan life, preserving not only foundational sauropods but also tiny pioneer mammals and their kin, evidence that lets us view an entire ecosystem, not just its giants. Roll time back nearly 190 million years and you're in a warm, seasonally dry rift valley dotted with shallow freshwater lakes and sprawling carbonate wetlands fed by shifting rivers. Araucarian conifer forests rim the shores while microbial mats built stromatolites in clear pools, and calcareous soils recorded the swing between drought and flood. In this teeming mosaic, long-necked herds browsed among conifers as fishes and other freshwater fauna cruised below, the perfect stage for our story from the dawn of the age of giants. Though scarce, the Kota Formation's freshwater fish remains, delicate bones and scales from slow rivers and shallow lakes, betray a pulsing, seasonal aquatic world that quietly fed and connected the towering herbivores above. Compact and long-tailed, Campylognithoids perches near the base of Novialoidea, a lineage close to Eudomorphodon yet distinctly more derived than the earliest Triassic forms. Its skull is lightly built but sharply profiled, a slender, slightly upturned snout with elongate external nares, low-set oversized orbits, and short, recurved teeth whose inner bevel creates a keen cutting edge. A broad sternum and stout wing bones powered a long wing finger, while a rod-stiffened tail acted as a dynamic rudder for precise, agile flight. Likely a visually oriented aerial hunter, perhaps active at dusk or by night, it coursed along shorelines and over open water, and rare gut content fossils even preserve belemnoid hooklets of Clarkituthis, signaling a taste for swift, squid-like prey. Across the damp margins of Kota's freshwater wetlands, multiple tridactyl theropod trackways, narrow Canopus prints alongside broader Eubronce impressions, lace the mudstone bedding plains, preserving the quick, purposeful traffic of mid-sized predators through a seasonally pulsing landscape. Broad-bodied yet early in design, Baraposaurus sits near the base of Sauropoda, often just outside Eusauropoda and is known from hundreds of bones that make its anatomy unusually well constrained for such an ancient giant. An elongated neck coupled to a short, barrel-like trunk and columnar limbs produced a large, obligate quadruped on the order of a dozen meters long. Its spine bears engineering for scale, hypospheme, hypantrum bracing in the dorsals and a sacrum of four fused vertebrae, while the mid-dorsal neural canal opens into an enlarged cavity rather than the fully pneumatic chamber seen in later sauropods. Only a handful of teeth are known, but they are broad, spoon-shaped, with wrinkled enamel and coarse denticles, tools for cropping tough plant matter rather than slicing it. It likely worked as a high browser and floodplain mover, cycling vast volumes of vegetation along river margins and shallow lakes within a warm, seasonal mosaic of carbonate wetlands and fluvial channels. Among the earliest sauropods, Kodosaurus anchors the base of the clade, an obligate quadruped with columnar limbs that still carries plesiomorphic notes reminiscent of non-sauropod sauropodomorphs. At roughly 9 meters and around 2.5 tons, it wore a conservative skeleton. Autopomorphies include unusually slender limb bones and a low, elongated preacetabular process of the ilium, while, unlike its neighbor Baraposaurus, its dorsal vertebrae show far less internal hollowing. As a mid-sized browser that likely shaped floodplain plant communities, it also carries a new twist, a 2024 study attributes four ellipsoidal tail club elements to the Cotosaurus hypodem, hinting at display or defense at the end of that long tail. Problematic by nature, 
Dandicosaurus is usually treated as Avarostra and Surdicetes, perhaps close to basal tetanurans, and is known from a proximally expanded pubis, parts of the ischium and vertebrae, plus a single, laterally compressed tooth. That pubis is distinctive while the referred dorsal vertebra is epistheselus and the caudal centra are amphicoelus with lateral fossae. Its blade-thin, recurved crown with fine distal denticles fits a flesh-slicing bite, though some of the referred vertebrae may belong to a sauropodomorph, reminding us that this genus limits remain uncertain. Ecologically, imagine a large cursorial predator pacing floodplains and wetland margins, theropod trackways in these beds attest to such traffic, even as size estimates remain extrapolations from scant bones. Step into the Jaslamar Formation, a Jurassic time capsule on India's former Tethian shoreline, first defined by geologist Richard Oldham in 1886. Laid down in the middle to late Jurassic, its sands, silts, and limestones capture a shallow marine world of lagoons, carbonate shoals, and open shelf that once rimmed Gondwan in India. Here the rock record teems with life, ammonites and other invertebrates, Durophagus hybodont sharks, and even scattered dinosaur remains. These discoveries make Jaslamar a keystone for testing ideas about early sauropod evolution and the corridors that linked India to the wider Jurassic seas. Imagine warm, shallow coastal waters slowly cooling over millions of years, nourishing bustling nurseries across sandbars and lagoons while sharks cruised the shallows and dinosaurs roamed nearby shores. Strophidus was a hybodontiform shark, set apart by its broad, low-crowned crushing teeth, very different from the high-cusped grasping dentition seen in Hybodus. Reaching roughly 2 to 3 meters in length, it likely carried dorsal fin spines ornamented with tubercles rather than ribs, a feature shared with Asteracanthus and inferred for Strophidus from comparative work. Its pavement-like dentition and heavy tooth were indicated Durophagus predator able to crack hard-shelled invertebrates with formidable bite forces. Long cast as a nectobenthic forager patrolling shelves and banks, isotopic signals suggest some populations ranged epipelagically and tolerated shifts in salinity, hinting at a versatile, possibly urohaline hunter within Jurassic seas. An isolated petal umbel from Bathonian marine beds has been proposed to belong to Spinosauridae, if confirmed, among the lineage's earliest records, hinting that hook-clawed, shoreline hunters of fish and other aquatic prey already prowled these coasts. Taxonomically, Therosaurus was first reported as an early diverging dicreosaurid, the oldest diplodocoid on record, but a 2025 reappraisal argued the fragmentary material cannot be placed securely in Diplodocoidea and treated it as an indeterminate eusauropod, so its exact perch on the sauropod tree remains debated. What the bones do reveal signals a low silhouette sauropod whose tall paired spines anchored powerful nuchal ligaments, in close dicreosaurid relatives, such spines have even been hypothesized to support soft tissue crests. Comparative anatomy of dicreosaurids points to a compact neck and a low browsing style, sweeping laterally through ground level to shrub height vegetation rather than harvesting the canopy. It likely partitioned plant resources with higher reaching sauropods as a specialized low browser, with those high spinal blades stiffening the neck trunk junction for sustained head down feeding and efficient travel between feeding patches. <laughs> 